despite many uh, recent technical frustrations, the urge to uh, make another um, video has uh, been irresistible for me. So uh, here goes. I've uh, obviously with the Waterloo uh, anniversary just recently, 200th anniversary. I was I wanted to get a game played, so. Um, I did play another game, which I think I might do a quick something on later, um, which was a print and play. But this is a uh, one of Kevin Zucker's uh, older uh, designs, and um, uh, sorry about the video quality because I'm, it's night time, so it's not natural light, so it won't be as good as it might be. But um, that's the uh, that's the board you can get. This is oh, I don't it's sold as a Ziploc or in a box. I got a Ziploc. Um, version. Uh, got lots of counters. You got um, record tracks. Uh, you got the rules. You got terrain effects chart and the combat chart. And of course, you got the board. I like I like the artwork. Some don't. Um, it's got this funny sort of mahogany effect edge. Although it's very hard to read the uh, reinforcement uh, dates. And uh, there's some typos in, in these tell you who's, who comes on when. There's some disagreements between this and on the back of uh, these are, are reinforcement charts for the various scenarios. There's some disagreements. So, um, uh, overall, the, the game has problems with the rules in that um, in the rules, even though this is the second edition rules, um, there's things that are blatantly wrong and then you have to sort of other bits of the rules contradict them, you, you have to work it out. So I've, I've had to um, modify stuff, look, that's just not true. So it, it has the sense of maybe it's series rules and the series evolved, but the um, updating of the rules didn't. So uh, you can figure it out, but um, uh, it's not too hard if you know anything about these games. But it's just a bit annoying when you read it all go, oh, that doesn't make sense. Then you realise, yeah, okay, they, they didn't edit that out. Anyway, I wanted to make this video particularly because, so, this uh, we have the Battle of Waterloo. It starts, um, the, the French start all off the board. Um, so you have very few, you have a few units um, of the Prussians on the board and uh, some Anglo-Allied or one or two over here. And then the French come on, the Prussians, uh, they're, they're basic, their sort of cantonments or setups were here, around here. They gradually concentrate and then the Brits come on. Uh, where are we here? We're on the 17th of June morning turn. So you've had two full days, uh, each turn is six hours, so you get three turns a day and then a night turn, which is basically kind of like a reorganisation supply check. Um, uh, I like the system, it's, uh, the units are corps or battalions, um, so XX, uh, down to regiments even, um, and uh, you can break down uh, um, cavalry into vedettes, which you use as kind of basically scouts, because uh, normally all these units would be concealed, so um, the, uh, let me see, let me find a leader, leader's norm normally on the top of a stack, and uh, you turn them upside down so you know that's French, but you don't know who's in that stack. Okay, and then you have more more concealment counters. So everything, every force is normally concealed. So you use the vedettes to um, go up, attempt essentially, uh, basically that that it's treated as a, as a combat, but they automatically just retreat because cavalry can always retreat from the combat, uh, and in that they reveal the the force they were inverted commas attacking. So, um, so it's all about movement, uh, and manoeuvre, uh, the classic um, Napoleonic situation is uh, he has to cross his forces at various different points and there's at various different times, some of them didn't arrive till um, 
the evening of the morning of the 16th of June. So it, it took a, a whole day to get all his forces onto the field and then moving, uh, trying to, uh, he tries to concentrate them and yes, knock out. Essentially, it's going to sort of follow the general plan because the Prussians are closer, so he's going to probably want to knock them out before the um, Anglo Allied can join them and create a force formidable enough to oppose him. But um, my game panned out in that um, Napoleon decided to send up his main force. These are the old the guards, so young guard, old guard, most powerful units, and a lot of others are supporting units straight up the road to Quattro Bora, which is, I believe, Quattro Bora is here. And this is Jimian Court. It's counted as a Chateau Hex. You have um, Chateau Hexes at Vouvion, etc., etc., the classic Waterloo battlefield. Um, so they're extra fortified. Um, uh, other towns have a fort, have a uh, defensive benefit as so do rivers and uh, so do um, um, uh, forests have, have a, uh, a sort of, you cannot bombard through forests so although artill artillery can bombard so they account as sort of far back don't take any combat any uh, detrimental combat effects or they can be up front and, and you know will have to retreat or be eliminated from any upcoming combat so um, woods don't have any sort of uh, strength adjustments, but artillery can't bombard through them, and cavalry uh, are not operative through them without have strength or something like that. So you've got those terrain effects. Um, the combat chart is uh, it has a one to two, one to one and a half, one to one, one and a half to one, two to one, then all the way up to six to one. It's got lots of uh, defender retreat, exchange, the exchange is that the, the loser loses the whole force and the, uh, the winner loses half of the loser's strength points at minimum. Um, retreats, retreat two, uh, D half is uh, loses a half, so defender loses half of strength points, attack loses half of strength points. Um, the units have a uh, full side and a reduced side. Um, so there's a few complete eliminations, but often it's to do with retreats, or if you surround um, units and zone of controls and they can't retreat, then when they are limited, they go to permanently eliminated. So these um, Russian units have all, I, I guess, essentially been captured, most of them. Other units, when eliminated, go to the day uh, elimination box available for reorganization. At night they get flipped to their reduced side and then go into the night reorganization box. Then any time in the next day or, or whenever in the day turn, uh, a commander in the, in the rear of the lines can uh, bring that unit back into play. Um, you've got casualty record tracks because each um, core has a, a strength beyond which it's demoralized. So. Um, uh, the first core of the Prussians is coming up to its demoralization strength. I haven't reached that yet, so I can't remember what demoralization does. Also, if um, whoops, if you're out of supply, as this one was um, in, in, during the night turn, because it was surrounded by uh, French forces, um, out of supply counts as demoralization. At night, if you're in the zone of control, you have to retreat. He couldn't retreat because you can't retreat through a zone, of con to a zone of control. But the units around him had to retreat back one or two hexes. So, uh, but the French have the first move um, in the daytime. So these guys will be able to, to, to move back if they want to fight. If you enter a zone of control, you have to attack. If you are in a zone of control at the start of a turn, you don't have to continue combat. Um, but forces that engage like that cannot be re-hidden. So um, at the beginning of the game, in the manoeuvre, I used the Vedettes quite a bit more um, and, you, you know, pretended I didn't know what was under each stack. So I had 
people go out scouting and, and so forth, but now um, I haven't bothered with the, the hidden unit information so much um, because the French are pressing forward more or less no matter what. I don't know, we'll see, uh, we'll see how, how this turn pans out. So it's the morning turn of the 17th and um, the, uh, the old guard commander moved back, that's Mortimer because Joe took sick. Mortimer, or was it the other way around? I think it's the other way around, Mortimer took sick. So um, he moved back to reorganise one of their units and um, each uh, command, uh, uh, overall commanders have a, a command rating, which is the number of core commanders who don't have that rating they can put in command. And the range is a maximum of four, often it's only two or three. If it's four, it has to always be through roads. Um, so other units have been out of command. So Napoleon decided to um, put some of these in command. You've got Ney there. You can only put one in command, but that's one corps and then one other unit. So odd units can be put in command. And on this side, you've got Grouchy with a command of two. So he put those two in command. So that core commander, that core commander out of command, and this one here. Um, each turn, interestingly, you pull a chit, and uh, the first number is the infantry movement, the second number is the cavalry movement. So normally infantry have movement points of four, cavalry six, but in this turn they're only going to get three and four respectively, unless you have some chits in hand, which you can add on as forced march. But when you do that, they then go, all the chits played go into the chit pull box, and so, um, like a weak force march could dilute your chances of getting a strong, um, full power um, chip pull next turn. So you've got to make some decisions there. Um, the initiative chips um, favour the French, so they will generally get a bit more movement and a bit more force march potential than the Brits. There's also road march, which you can do, blah, blah. So, uh, but anyway, yes, so this is the interesting situation. Waterloo is essentially going to happen around Quatre Bras. So, uh, Quatre Bras didn't happen, um, it, well, it did in the sense that it was the old guard, it was the main French force, or the guard unit, so it was, it was actually the young guard that went forward with artillery and some um, cavalry force. These forced the uh, Allied forces back. Um, but then night came, and uh, the Allies had a chance to bring up. They had a great train of folks in the um, march order. They managed to come up. So Wellington's gathering his forces here. You've got um, see that? Sorry, it's upside down, isn't it? It's um, so we've got cavalry here, Uxbridge cavalry. That's actually, that's DB supposed to be a cavalry sign, there's a typo there. So you've got cavalry, cavalry, you've got British cavalry, uh, sorry, Anglo Allied cavalry on the flank here, you've got French cavalry there, and the infantry corps there, um, second corps there. Uh, what can I say? It's exciting stuff because, uh, so the, the Brits are kind of hoping, <laughs> the Brits, because it's Wellington. I mean, the Anglo Allies are. Are trying to, I guess, envelop um, the French around this side. They're hoping that the um, Prussians can organise themselves and hold um, this flank. Uh, and then I said, essentially, I think they're just going to defend along this line here through the forests uh, and the river. And so um, the onus is, of course, of attack is on Napoleon. Um, is he going to use his guard for an immediate attack? Or will he have to wait till the afternoon? By the time these guys have got up, each hex is a mile um, uh, in distance. So it'll take a while for these guys to get up and assemble. Or will there be some manoeuvring? Let's see. 
But you can see a large part of the French force was here in preparation if the Prussians held, but they, they were they, they tried to help. There was some to and fro in around Ligny, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. Never heard them put these names pronounced. Um, so there were some to and fro battles here, but the, the, the Russians had to scarper because, as we saw, they lost a lot of units in surrounding. Now, that was a lesson for me because although you want powerful stacks on attack, um, on defense, you want. You need to protect your flanks. Uh, I know it sounds obvious, but you know it's kind of difficult when uh, your, your flanks. That then means your your whole line is kind of each each segment of it is quite weak. So I'll have to see how that works out. I think it's, it's basically going to work out that you have to have cavalry on the flanks. They will automatically retreat, so you'll lose the flank. But um, the main body may have survived. I don't know. In fact, it's going to be. Nice to work out. So it's interesting. It's uh, operational in the sense, so I suppose the scale and uh, what's going on, because it, it's essentially a game of manoeuvre, but you're going to have these, um, this is going to be a big bloody battle. I didn't think that was going to be as bloody as it was, but um, that was two lucky um, surroundings. Um, but it's also kind of grand tactical because of what I've just described and uh, combined arms give a bonus shift so if you have cavalry um, infantry or in the same combat you get a bonus there and then Napoleon gets that shift so uh, that's just what I wanted to report last days of the grand